In this lecture, we will discuss various stentic forms. So let's start this topic. First of all, the stentic form that I want to discuss with you is rhyme royal. Now, what is rhyme royal? Actually, it is a stentic form and it was invented by Geoffrey Chaucer. Geoffrey Chaucer, you know, father of English literature, father of English language, father of English poetry. And he invented rhyme royal in his poem, Troilus and Crusade. Now, what is rhyme royal? Actually, rhyme royal is a stanza of seven iambic pentameter lines. So I have delivered my complete lecture on meter. So what is the meaning of iambic pentameter? So I have already delivered a complete lecture on meter. So you can watch that lecture on my app, Oxbridge English, and you can understand that what is the meaning of iambic and pentameter. Pentameter means there are 10 syllables in each and every line. And iambic means the arrangement of syllables is unstressed followed by stressed. So you can watch that lecture on meter and you can understand. So a rhyme royal is a stanza of seven iambic pentameter lines. And its rhyme scheme is A, B, A, B, B, C, C. You must remember the rhyme scheme also. So that is called rhyme royal. Why it is called royal? Because it was used by James I. I think you know James I, who had been the king of England during Jacobian period. So James I, he wrote uh, the book King's Queer. It's King's Queer, King apostrophe S. Yes. It is not King is no. That's wrong. King apostrophe S. Yes. So queer means books. So he used this. Uh, stentic form in his poem, The King's Square. And that's why this right, this stentic form is called royal. I think you are able to understand first time of uh, stentic form, prime royal. Now, the second type of stentic form is Spenserian stenja. As the name indicates, Spenserian. So this stentic form was invented by Edmund Spencer in his incomplete epic, The Fairy Queen. Because he wanted to write the epic in 12 books, but he was able to complete only six books and half. I have also delivered my complete lecture on Edmund Spencer, and you can watch that lecture on my app, Oxbridge English. So what is a Spencerian stanza? So it is a stanza of nine lines. Now, First eight lines, they contain 10 syllables, means in first eight line, first eight lines are in pentameter. 10 syllables means pentameter. So first eight lines are in pentameter and the ninth line contains 12 syllables. And that's why ninth line is called Alexandrian. You must remember. So ninth line is called Alexandrian. Uh, Two or three times questions have been raised on such terms in net exam. So you must remember. So it is a stanza of nine iambic pentameter, eight iambic pentameter lines, and the nine line and the ninth line consists of 12 syllables, and the ninth line is called Alexandrine. Its rhyme scheme is A B A B. B, C, B, C, C. You know that Spenserian has used interconnected rhyme scheme. So the rhyme scheme always starts with A, B, A, B. And that, that because the rhyme scheme is interconnected, so the next four lines starts with B because its first four lines, they are ending with B. A, B, A, B because the rhyme scheme is interconnected. So then in the fifth line, we have B, B, C, B, C. And then the ninth line starts with the C. So the rhyme scheme is interconnected. You must remember. It's important example are John Keats. He has used a Spenserian stanza in his poem, Eve of St. Agnes, P.B. Shelley, who wrote an epic, who wrote an elegy. Elegy, do you know? A poem written on the death of a friend or relative. 
So P.V. Shelley, he wrote analogy on the death of John Keats and the norm of and the name of that allergy is Adonis. And he used Spencerian stranger in Adonis also. So these are two important examples. John Keats, he made use of Spencerian stranger in his poem, Eve of St. Agnes and P.B. Shelley in his allergy on John Keats Adonis. Now the next stranger form is Oteva Rhyma. The name itself indicates Oteva. Oteva means eight. So this stanvic form started in Italy, like sonnet. Sonnet also started in Italy. So Oteva Rhyma also started in Italy. And it was introduced into England by Sir Thomas Wyatt. You must remember. So it was Sir Thomas Wyatt who introduced Oteva Rhyma into English. And Oteva Rhyma is a stanza of eight iambic pentameter lines. Oteva means eight. So it is a stanza of eight iambic pentameter lines. Pentameter, line, pentameter means in each and every line there are ten syllables. And those ten syllables are arranged. Iambic means arrangement of stressed and unstressed syllables. So unstressed syllable followed by stressed syllable. So as I have already informed you that you can watch a complete lecture on meter, which is available on my app, Oxbridge English, and you can come to know what is iambic, trochaic, anapestic, dactylic, spondy, pirha, ambi, break. So you can come to know about seven types of meter. Its rhyme scheme is ABAB, ABAB, AB, then CC. That's the rhyme scheme you must remember. And its prominent example is Lord Byron's Don John, because Lord Byron's Don John is an incomplete epic style. Uh, overall, there are 17 cantos in Don John. 16 cantos are complete, and one canto is incomplete. So you must remember. Another stanzic form is Tarza Rhyma. Tarza means three. It is like Oteva Rhyma. It started in Italy, like Oteva Rhyma, Italy, and Sonnet, it started in Italy. And it was again introduced into England by Sir Thomas Wyatt. You must remember. And what is Terza Rhyma? Actually, Terza Rhyma is a group of interconnected. That's a word is interlinked. L I N K E D. So D is missing here. So Terza Rhyma is a group of interlinked tercets. Now, what is the meaning of tercet? Tercet means a stanza of three lines. Three lines ke stanza ko hum tercet kehte hain. Jaise ki a stanza of four lines is called quatrain. Kyunki word jo quatrain hai, wo kahan se bana hai? Quarter se. Quarter mene chota hisa. So a stanza of four lines is called quatrain. A stanza of three lines is called tercet. And a stanza of two lines is called couplet. Ye aapko pata hoga sabko. So Tarza Raima. It consists of interconnected tercet, means interconnected stanza of three lines. And the rhyme scheme is interconnected like Edmund Spencer. Tercet is a stanza of three lines. Its rhyme scheme is deco A, B, A. Now, this is the first tercet. Now, the second tercet is starting with B. B, C, B. Third tercet is starting with C. They go upas me connection man ra inka. A B A, then B C B, then it starts with C D C. Agli thin line kaan se start hongi D C. D E D, fir E se shuru ho jayenge, aise ye chudte jayenge. So that's a Terza Rima. And uh, Terza Rima has been used by P B Shelley. In his wonderful poem, Or to West Wind, you must remember. Now, another stingic form is heroic couplet. Couplet, the word couplet has come from the word couple, couple many two. So, couplet means a stanza of two lines that is called couplet. But what is heroic couplet? Now, heroic couplet has several features. So, Heroic couplet is a stanza of two lines, but those two lines are in iambic pentameter. This is the first condition that 
the lines must be in iambic pentameter pentameter means in each and every line there must be 10 syllables and the syllables must be arranged kaise arranged hone chahiye unstressed followed by stressed aise arrangement hone chahiye aur ye do lines ki jo rhyme scheme hoti hai end mein wo same hone chahiye so itni sari condition jab follow hoti hai couplet mein only then it becomes heroic couplet so heroic couplet is a stanza of two iambic pentameter lines rhyming each other and it was first used by geoffrey chaucer because geoffrey chaucer invented rhyme royal in his poem troilus and cressid so heroic couplet was first of all used by geoffrey chaucer in his poem the legend of a good women mein usne isko use kiya tha then later on heroic couplet was made complete was made perfect by two writers belonging to the new classical period john dryden and alexander pope and you all know that alexander pope is the greatest writer of a heroic couplet as robert browning a victorian poet is the greatest writer of a dramatic monologues so dramatic monologue is the chief quality of heroic couplet similarly heroic couplet is a chief feature of alexander pop now types of heroic couplet heroic couplet it is of two types one is closed and the second is run on now what is the meaning of closed as the name indicates so in a closed couplet the sense means the meaning gets completed within the single couplet closed couplet mein kya hota hai do line mein hi meaning pura ho jata hai that is called closed couplet for example john dryden and alexander pope so they use closed couplet in their poems so inhone apni poems mein closed couplet use kiya and what is second run on couplet what is the meaning of run on couplet run on means a couplet in which the sense in which the meaning is not completed within the single couplet matlab ki do line mein meaning pura nahi hota hai and the meaning runs on to the next couplet ke wo meaning hai agle couplet pe chala jata hai that is called closed and run on so john dryden and alexander pope they were the great writer of closed heroic couplet now the next type of uh, stanchic is uh, rondeau or rondel it has two names now it started in france and that's why this stanchic form is french in origin and rondeau or rondel is a poem of 10 or 13 lines iski poem hoti hai they say sonnet is a poem of 14 lines so rondel is a poem of 10 or 13 lines and these 13 lines they are divided 10 or 13 lines are divided into three stanzas teen stanzas mein hoti hai you must remember and there is refrain also rondel mein refrain bhi hota hai what is the meaning of refrain refrain means repetition of a phrase or a line at the end of the at the end of the stanza ki stanza ke end mein kya hota hai कि वो लाइन रिपीट होते रिफ्रेन समझते हो जैसे आप कोई भी गाना सुनते हो वट हैपन्स इन ए सॉन्ग दैट अ लाइन गेट्स रिपीटेड एट द एंड ऑफ ईच स्टेंजा जैसे गाने वाला एक स्टेंजा बोलता है तो उसके बाद वो एक लाइन को रिपीट करता है दैट इज कॉल्ड रिफ्रेन सो वट हैपन्स इन रॉन्डल की ओपनिंग लाइन्स ऑफ फर्स्ट स्टेंजा फर्स्ट स्टेंजा की जो ओपनिंग लाइन्स होती हैं वो रिपीट होती हैं कहाँ at the end of second and third stanza because 10 or 13 lines they are uh, they are adjusted in three stanzas and the opening lines of first stanza they are repeated at the end of second and third stanza this ka prominent example hai geoffrey chaucer's rondel of merciless beauty just i want to give you example agli slides pe aapko example dunga rondel ko clear karne ke liye कि कैसे ओपनिंग लाइंस जो है फर्स्ट स्टेंजा की वो रिपीट हो रही है एट द एंड ऑफ द सेकंड एंड थर्ड स्टेंजा इस पोइम को देखिए हमने इसका मीनिंग नहीं समझना आई वांट टू टेल यू ओनली द स्टेंजिक फॉर्म देखिए पहले पहरे की दो लाइंस देखिए योर टू ग्रेट आईज विल स्ले मी सडनली देर ब्यूटी शेक्स मी हुज वन सर्वीन 
अब ये दो लाइंस जो हैं ये कहा रिपीट हो रही हैं जरा आप देखिए दे आर गेटिंग रिपीटेड एट द एंड ऑफ द सेकेंड एंड द थर्ड स्टेंजा इस ड्रोंडल को तीन स्टेंजा में लिखा गया इफ यू लुक एट द क्लोजिंग लाइन ऑफ द सेकेंड स्टेंजा क्या आ रही है पहली दो लाइन रिपीट हो रही है Your two great eyes will slay me suddenly. Their beauty shakes me. Who was once serene? And come to the third stanza. What happens in the third stanza? That all the three lines of the first stanza are repeated. Your two eyes to your two great eyes will slay me suddenly. Their beauty shakes me. Who was once serene? Straight through my heart, the wound is quick and keen. So that is called rondel, a type of stanzic form. which contains 10 to 13 lines so if you concentrate on this poem so there are 13 lines in this poem so that is called rondel you must remember a poem of 10 to 13 lines uh, which is arranged in three stanzas and the opening lines of the first stanza they are repeated at the end of the second and third stanza i think you will be able to understand now the next type of stanzic form is villanel now what is villanel it is again started in france and that's why it is french in origin there are overall nine lines in villanel 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 mein nine lines hoti hain aur nine lines ko kaise aap uh, uh, sorry there are 19 lines not nine line there are 19 lines Line 19 lines are divided into five tercet. Tercet, I think you know. We have just discussed a stanza of three lines. So, three three line ke five pehre hoti hain, five stanza hoti hain, and then we have one quatrain. Quatrain, I think you know, a stanza of four lines because the word quatrain has come from the word quarter. So, so 19 lines are divided into five stanzas of three lines each. and one stanza of four lines each aur aur kya hota hai iske andar there is a refrain also first and third line of first tercet first pehra jo tha jisme teen line hai uski pehli aur teesri line repeat hoti hai iska example le sakte ho ek dylan thomas ek bahut badhiya uh, modern writer hai उसकी एक बड़ी फेमस पोइम है डोंट गो जेंटल इन टू दैट गुड नाइट एंड दिस पोइम डायलन टॉमस रोट वेन हिज फादर हिज फादर वॉज इल एंड थ्रू दिस पोइम ही इनकरजेज हिज फादर टू फाइट अगेंस्ट डेथ सो दैट्स अ वंडरफुल मैं आपको विद एग्जाम्पल क्लियर करता हूं इसको ओनली देन यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड विल इन आप देखिए टोटल कितनी नाइन है देर आर नाइन लाइन्स दैट इज विलिनल अब देखो पहले पहरे की जो पहली और थर्ड लाइन है वो रिपीट हो रही है कहा एट द एंड ऑफ द सेकेंड एंड द थर्ड स्टेंजा एट द एंड ऑफ द सेकेंड स्टेंजा फर्स्ट लाइन इज रिपीटिंग इज बींग रिपीटेड एंड एट द एंड ऑफ द थर्ड लाइन द थर्ड लाइन इज बींग रिपीटेड एट द एंड ऑफ द थर्ड लाइन इन थर्ड स्टेंजा डोंट गो जेंटल इन टू दैट गुड नाइट old age should burn and rave at close of day rage rage against the dying of the light means he encourages his father to fight against death now if you look at the second stanza so at the end of the second stanza the first line of the first stanza is repeated that is called refrain don't go gentle into that good night and what happens at the end of the third stanza the third line of the first stanza is repeated raise raise against the dying of the light so that is another type of stanzic form that is called villanel okay i think the same pattern is going on so we can understand this one and what happens at the end of the sixth stanza because there are overall 19 lines here So 19 lines are arranged into five tercet, and again in the fourth tercet, the first line of the first stanza is repeat is being repeated. Then at the end of the fifth stanza, the third line of the first stanza is being repeated. And what happens at the end of the last stanza? That is called quatrain. 
So the first and the third line, they are repeated together. You can observe from this uh, uh, pattern. Don't go gentle into that good night. Raise, raise against the dying of the light. Now, next stentic form is sestina. Now, what is sestina? Sestina is again French in origin because it was invented in France. And sestina is a poem of six six line stanza. It's me cheche line ki che stanza It means overall there are 36 lines in sestina. Sestina me 36 lines hoti hai. And they are arranged in six stanzas of six line each. And this sustainer hai, ye kis se end hoti hai? Ending with a three line envoy. Means 36 wo plus three line extra hoti hai, 39 lines hoti hai. Ab envoy kya hota hai? Envoy is called concluding stanza. Wo stanza jiske saath kya hota hai? Uh, poem end hoti hai, jise hum conclusion kehte hai. And that is called envoy. So envoy is called concluding stanza. So overall, there are seven stanzas here. First six stanza have six lines each, and the seventh stanza in the seventh stanza there are three lines. Uh, and there is a repetition also. What is the repetition? That in sestina. Ending words of the first stanza, they are repeated. Wo repeat hote rehte hain. Aur jo envoy hota hai, which is a stanza of three lines, usme jitne bhi last ke jo six ending words hain, wo saare repeat hote hain. Ek badi technical form hai. Mujhe pata hai ki aapko abhi kuch clear nahi ho raha. But when we discuss the example, abhi main aapke saath example show karunga, you will be able to understand. कि छे-छे लाइन के छे पहरे होते हैं स्टेंजर्स होते हैं फिर एक सेवन स्टेंजर होता है जिसमें थ्री लाइंस होते हैं जिसे मैं एनवॉय कहते हैं एनवॉय मींस कंक्लूडिंग स्टेंजर होता है और इसमें क्या होता है कि फर्स्ट स्टेंजर के जो एंडिंग वर्ड्स होते हैं दे आर बीइंग रिपीटेड वो रिपीट होते रहते हैं कहां पर एट द एंड ऑफ द नेक्स्ट स्टेंजर्स और जो लास्ट का जो स्टेंजर होता है थ्री लाइन का उसमें वो सारे के सारे at the end of the jo words hai, wo sare ke sare repeat uh, you can take the example of elizabeth bishop's uh, poem a miracle for breakfast just i want to give you example jara dekhiye che lines hai iske andar iske concluding word dekhiye coffee crumb balcony miracle sun river अब ये जो concluding words हैं कि अब repeat होते रहेंगे अब दूसरा पहरा देखिए देखो वो छे के छे word repeat हो रहे हैं sequence same नहीं रहेंगी लेकिन words change होते रहेंगे जैसे क्या आया the river, coffee, sun, crumb, miracle, balcony तो ऐसे क्या होता रहेगा ये छे जो words है ending जो first uh, stanza ke jo ending words they they will keep on repeating themselves and what happens at the end of the uh, seventh stanza jis hum envoy kehte hain ye sare ke sare che words repeat honge zara dekhiye we licked up the crumb aa gaya ek and swallowed the coffee dusra ending word aa gaya a window across the river third ending word aa gaya cold the sun Fourth ending word aga as if the miracle fifth aga were working on the wrong balcony. Sixth hamara jo word tha wo ho gaya. So it is a typical stingic form. Ek mushkil stingic form se ki itna kuch dhyan mein rakhna. So that is called sestina. Next type of stingic form is limerick. Now, what is a limerick? Actually, limerick is a humorous poem. So it was uh, popularized by one British poet, Edward Lear, popular kiya tha. And in a limerick, there are total five lines, five lines hoti hai. First, second and fifth line, mein kya hoti hai? Seven to ten syllables hoti hai. Aur unki rhyme scheme same hoti hai. Rhyme scheme to I think you know, 
रेपिटेशन ऑफ सिमिलर साउंडिंग वर्ड्स एट दी एंड ऑफ लाइन्स लाइन्स के एंड में जो एक जैसी आवाज वाले शब्द आते हैं उसे हम राइम कहते हैं तो टोटल फाइव लाइन्स होती हैं फर्स्ट सेकेंड एंड फिफ्थ लाइन में सेवन टू टेन सिलेबल्स होती हैं और उनकी सेम राइम स्कीम होती है एंड थर्ड एंड इन दर्ड एंड फोर्थ लाइन देर आर फाइव टू सेवन सिलेबल्स और उनकी राइम स्कीम सेम होती है जस्ट टेक वन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ लिमरिक ये पांच लाइन्स की पोइम है जरा देखिए फर्स्ट सेकेंड और लास्ट में देखिए there was an old man with a bread who said it's just as feared sorry with a beard it's not bread it's with a beard feared dekho pehli dusri aur last line ki bhi kya aa rahi hai beard inki rhyme scheme scheme hai have all built their nest in my beard to dekhiye inki rhyme scheme same hai beard feared beard अगर आप सिलेबल काउंट करोगे तो सेवन टू टेन तक हैं। अगर पहली लाइन में सिलेबल काउंट करो तो कितने हैं देर में एक है वर्ड्स में दो एन में तीन ओल्ड में फोर मैन में फाइव विद में सिक्स अ में सेवन बी एड में एट तो आठ है ना सात से दस सिलेबल होते हैं अब आप दूसरी लाइन में सिलेबल काउंट करो बिकॉज आई हैव डिलीवर्ड माई लेक्चर ऑन सिलेबल ऑल्सो so you can watch that lecture on my app oxbridge english in which i have cleared this concept in detail dusri line mein dekh lijiye who ek said to it three is four just five add six i seven and feared me one eight to bhai seven to 10 syllables aa rahe hain first second or fifth line mein rhyme scheme scheme hogi aur jo hamara थर्ड और फोर्थ लाइन होती है उनकी राइम स्कीम सेम होती है आप देख सकते हो टू आउल्स एन ए हैन फॉर लाक्स एन ए रेन रेन हैन ठीक है और इनमें कितने सिलेबल होते हैं फाइव टू सेवन तो आप देख लो टू में एक सिलेबल है आउल्स में दो एंड में थ्री ए फोर हैन फाइव तो इसमें फाइव है तो अगली वाली लाइन में भी फाइव सिलेबल्स है so this is another type of stringic form that is called limeric you must remember so that's all about uh, stringic form so in this lecture we have discussed uh, some stringic forms and i hope that you will be able to understand the stringic forms so if you want to watch more videos relating to english literature linguistic literary term research methodology literary theory literary criticism american literature indian literature so don't forget to download my app oxbridge english from play store and the link of this app is given in the description box thanks for watching the video